Tensions are rising on the Korean Peninsula as the U.S. positions its second destroyer capable of shooting down missiles near the North's border. Let's have a look. The Pentagon has announced that the anti-missile warship USS John McCain is stationed off the Korean Peninsula. This is the second destroyer that Washington deploys to the Pacific region. The U.S. has also sent F-22 stealth fighters to South Korea and tested nuclear-capable B-2 bombers. Still, the White House says it has not seen any sign that Pyongyang is mobilizing its forces following last week's military threats. This is a, a dramatic step forward as far as their um, uh, posturing is concerned. Now, the U.S. and South Korea uh, normally conduct joint military drills. They do it annually, but it's always been sort of just strictly naval. But now to bring in these uh, high-powered uh, and, 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 and potentially nuclear-capable um, airplanes into the, into the fold is, is a real signal that the United States uh, is taking this uh, situation very seriously. And, of course, this has created a lot of concern in the region. Um, you've had uh, the Japanese uh, expressing concerns to their allies in the United States. You've even had uh, U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon come out and say, this is basically now become uh, an almost unacceptable situation. So a lot of concern here in East Asia right now. Pyongyang, on the other hand, announced on Tuesday that it will restart operations at a nuclear reactor shut down in 2007. It says the Yongbyon nuclear plant's output would be used to solve its acute electricity shortage as well as strengthen the country's nuclear armed force. In reaction to the news, the UN Atomic Agency said Pyongyang's move is deeply regrettable. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry also called the plan unacceptable and stressed that the U.S. is ready to defend itself and its allies. In another development, Pyongyang has closed access to Kasong Joint Factory Zone. It barred South Korean workers from entering the zone and closed the border to trucks carrying raw materials for the factories. Pyongyang announced that it will allow South Korean workers who are still in the zone to return home. Following the move, South Korea's defense minister Kim Kwon Jin said that the country will consider all options, including military action, if its citizens' safety comes at risk. On Saturday, North Korea announced that it is in a state of war with its neighbor. Tensions have been high in recent months since North Korea launched a nuclear weapons test in February. The U.S. and its allies pushed for more sanctions against the country after the test. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has said that the country's nuclear weapons act as a reliable war deterrent and guaranteed sovereignty. Washington and Seoul have increased their military cooperation in recent months by launching joint military drills. The military exercises have drawn harsh response from North Korean leaders who have called the war games provocative. Joining me now from Seoul is Press TV's Joseph Kim with the latest. Joseph, how serious is the back and forth rhetoric uh, between the North and the South and what has to happen for the tension to recede? Well, the tension has heightened in recent weeks and especially today when the Kazan uh, industrial complex was barred for South Korean workers to enter. But I think what we need to also realize is that media uh, especially Western media, are kind of upplaying this certain tension to a extreme. Uh, this is not saying that the situation is not serious, but in terms of this rhetoric and these vows and warnings from North Korea as well as South Korea, it's all been seen before. Um, this does not mean that the extremity of the situation needs to not be considered. Uh, Ban Ki-moon did say, however, that negotiations and dialogue are the key to resolving the current crisis. So we need to keep in mind that the situation right now has to be eased through dialogue and cooperation. However, we see from the United States and South Korea saying that they'll only come into dialogue if North Korea abandons its nuclear ambitions and joins the international community. But North Korea continually has stated that it wants to be independent, as seen by its um, is seen by its response to reopen its nuclear reactor, which uh, is able to produce plutonium-based uh, weaponry. Joseph Kim, Press TV's correspondent, uh, joining us from Seoul.